Hey everyone, welcome back and if you're new, welcome. My name is Adelina and I make videos about living in my tiny house on wheels and living a more attentional of life. Now if you're wondering where the heck is that crazy chick now, I'm in my bathroom and <laughs> it's a very small space. But I'm here to talk about my higher washer dryer combo unit. It's a two cubic foot ventless washer dryer combo unit. I've had it for over a year and a half now and I've used it quite a bit and I thought it was time that I gave you a review on it, explained how to use it, gave you my thoughts on it and uh, did a little maintenance because I have some laundry to do which I'll show you how I do it in the tiny house but I also wanted to uh, do a little maintenance and I thought this was the perfect time to take you along with me. So if that is of interest to you, please stay watching. So first let's discuss what is a washer dryer combo unit. Uh, when I first got this thing, there were some things that really confused me about it. These washer dryer combo units are not very common in North America. They are very common in um, places like Europe, Australia, New Zealand, or countries where there are where the homes are much smaller than we're used to in Canada and in the US. They are becoming more popular in Canada, North America, because the tiny house movement is growing, um, the RV living movement is growing, and it allows you to have a washer and a dryer in a space where you don't have uh, the ability to vent outside. Because they're ventless, they don't vent outside. There is a, a heating element with a fuse, but there's a condensing unit in there. And when it's drying, the lint is captured in that condensing unit and is expelled uh, with water through the same drain as the water when you're washing. So that's a big difference for these units than you would have in your standard dryer unit in your home. Now, while this doesn't have a vent to catch your lint, it does have a filter. And that's something that you should probably have a look at once a year, especially if you're hearing some weird sounds in there because that filter is a place where uh, things like coins and stuff will collect. Um, and it's also where you can sort of make sure that that filter is clean. I've never actually <laughs> cleaned mine, but I thought today was a good day to do it and bring you along with me. So let's see what's there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this little door here and behind here is a little hose that will drain the rest any residual water that's in this tub and the filter that will pull out see if it needs cleaning run it under some water and make sure it's clean um, you're gonna need a little pan to catch any residual water that might be in there I have no idea if there's gonna be water in there and you need a coin or a screwdriver to uh, get that out I'm gonna use a loonly because I'm in Canada and this is our dollar coin, the loony. So what you have to do is press down and out. I did it before, I can do it now. So when we open that up, we can see the hose. Now if I was having a problem with the drum, I would uh, take that top off and drain that in, before doing any maintenance. But I don't have a problem and I figure if it ain't broke, don't mess with it. So I'm just gonna leave that where it is and uh, get to cleaning the filter or pulling the filter out. So I guess I don't really need that. So we're gonna pull, turn this counterclockwise. Why does everything have to be so difficult? Because of the angle. Uh oh, Ooh. there is water, there is water. There is water, there is water, there is water. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Turn that back on. All right. <laughs> Did I learn my lesson? Yes. I learned my lesson. You do have to drain this. Well, there we go. So I'm going to pull this off. And I'm going to drain this water. And you're not going to make the same mistake I just did because you're going to do this before you open that filter. I did not expect that. Okay. Looks like we got all the water out in the container instead of the floor. Now, if I was a polished YouTuber, I would cut that part out. But what would be the point of that? Because then 
none of us would learn anything. So I'm just going to dump this in the sink. And I'm going to get another towel under here to catch the stuff that I inadvertently let loose. Now I can open this up and there shouldn't be water pouring out and there isn't. Ah, lesson learned. Now the filter has a little bit of cat hair and lint in it. So I'm just going to give that a quick rinse and then I'm going to take the washcloth and just wipe in there. Okay, give that a dry and then I'm going to just clean in there. I'm going to wash this towel in this load anyways. So I'm just going to clean in there, have a look, make sure that there's nothing, sorry for the back of my head, but make sure there's nothing in there, nothing big that needs to come out. Okay, we're going to put this back, and we're going to put this back. Whew. That was more exciting than it should have been. Now let's get to understanding the controls on the combo unit. All right, so let's look at the controls on the higher washer dryer combo unit. First of all, I'm just gonna turn the on button on. Sorry, <laughs> this is the on button. And it'll make that funky sound. The higher washer dryer combo unit has nine wash cycles and three dry cycles. So for the wash, you're basically just gonna turn this knob so the Quick wash is one that I use quite a bit if I'm just washing, you know, a lighter load. Um, it takes 28 minutes and it will, whenever you turn it to the cycle that you want, it will automatically flash over here the settings for cycle. So for the quick wash, it automatically goes to warm temperature, um, extra high wash, spin speed, and a light soil level. Now you can change this based on these buttons here. You can just press them to whatever you want. It'll go back to the default whenever you uh, turn your washer off and then back on. So if you're just doing a wash load, then you're going to fill the drum. You can fill the drum two thirds full. It's a two cubic foot capacity washer. So that's the space that's in there, but you can't fill it up all the way because it just won't wash properly. Just like you wouldn't load your regular front load washer fully full, it won't have enough room to actually toss the clothes and wash them properly. Um, so if you're just washing, you can fill it up two thirds full. But if you're planning to wash and then dry, you really only wanna fill this up half, half full so that when it switches to dry, it's got enough room to really tumble the clothes and get them dry. The nice thing about this, washer dryer combo unit and washer dryer combo units in general is that you can set them so that they wash and then automatically switch to drying on their own. It will automatically switch. So if you're just doing wash, you want this, this uh, dry level to be in flashing off. But if you wanted it to go to automatically dry, then you would press this to uh, whatever level you want. I'm gonna leave it off because I don't dry clothes in here very often. Normally, I hang my clothes to dry. I usually use either the quick or the normal cycle, uh, but almost always, 99.99% .99 of the time, I just use the quick. If you're gonna to go to drying, you'll obviously turn it over here. Now, auto dry, it will show three hours and 20 minutes, but it won't necessarily take that long. One of the nice things about this is it can sense the moisture level in the clothes. So it will stop when the clothes are dry, but that's the default length of time on the rack. I will put them in here for 30 minutes and let them fluff a little bit. You also have a, a soak setting, rinse and spin, spin only and clean clean washer. I've never used this. One of the nice things about this washer dryer combo unit is that it is considered one of the most energy efficient on the market because it actually uh, senses the weight of the uh, load that you put in here and it dispenses water accordingly. So you will actually over time save a lot of water by using this model. So let me show you inside the drum. I mentioned earlier that the higher washer dryer combo unit is a two cubic foot capacity inside. One of the nice things is it's got a stainless steel drum um, with some plastic components, but you don't have to worry about rust in there. One of the things I have noticed because it doesn't have a lint trap is that if I wash something that's got a lot of cat hair in it, I will collect some, some cat hair in here 
uh, I left it in here so that you could see it. And what I do is um, I will come through here, I don't know, once a month or something and just sort of open this up and wipe that down. I'm just going to load it to wash. So I'm going to show you how much will fit in there for a wash cycle. I have my jammies. I've got a couple of towels. Some washcloths some underwear and some socks so that's about half full and that's about all you would want to fill it if you were just uh, if you were gonna wash and dry if you were just gonna wash I could probably fit a pair of jeans in here and maybe a t-shirt more um, but in general this is really all I, about as much as I put in here if I'm doing a big load say my sheets and things like that I go to the laundromat I can do sheets in here I have done sheets in here but you know, I think it's it's easier to just take them to the laundromat and certainly I don't think they would dry in here very well. Now to put your soap in, you would put your liquid soap in here, um, you can put your um, fabric softener in here and I guess, I don't know, bleach? I'm not sure, but I just use this one. This is where I put my soap. Um, I use these True Earth laundry strips and they're amazing. I love it because they are uh, environmentally friendly. You don't have big plastic jugs that you're throwing away all the time. The, the packaging is um, recyclable and uh, they clean really well. So I just take one of the sheets and when you're putting one of these in a front loader, what you wanna do is tear these up into little bits just to make them a little bit easier to get down there and dissolve. I'm gonna do quick wash and I am going to have it on uh, normal soil so it takes it a little bit longer and then you just press the on off button again and it automatically starts yes I'm gonna finish the video sitting on my toilet not on my toilet but sitting in the bathroom why not uh, so one other thing about the washer dryer combo unit. The higher does not have a, um, a vibration reduction sort of technology built in. Some of the higher end ones, so the, the, the higher brand is about mid-range. You can s expect to spend about $1,400 Canadian. Um, I know that they have them at Best Buy. I think you can get them online as well. And so they don't have that uh, vibration reduction technology built in. Because I want a tiny house on wheels um, and even though I'm blocked up and very stable, when this does the spin cycle you can actually feel a slight vibration in the house. It's not bad, it doesn't make my dishes rattle or anything like that, but you can feel it. It doesn't last long. It's just you can feel it because you're in a small space. If this was in a regular size house and in, in your basement or somewhere like that obviously you wouldn't feel it. You're gonna pay more for that kind of technology. If that's really important to you, then you probably wanna go with a higher end model and spend, you know, $2,500 or something like that. But the nice thing about the higher is that it is uh, well-priced for getting both units in one. It's one of the most energy efficient on the market because it has the, um, the water sensing uh, abilities so it dispenses the water based on the weight of your load and it also has the moisture sensing ability when it's drying so it it senses the moisture in your in your clothes and stops when they're dry which can save you a lot of money over the long run and it's a very small footprint so this can fit in a closet this can fit under a countertop um, it fits really well here under my sink that's the pro the fact that it's small it can fit anywhere it allows you to put laundry services in a space where you can't vent things outside but you do give up something to have that um, those benefits and the the main thing you give up is the fact that you have a much smaller capacity than you can get in in separate freestanding units or the higher end washer dryer combo unit I'm totally okay with that especially since even when I was in my condo and I had a separate washer dryer full size I hung up most of my clothes to dry because I think it makes your clothes last longer. There's a lot less wear and tear on them. They don't stretch out of shape uh, and they don't shrink. For me, it was an easy trade-off.
Now I'm going to offer a bit of advice here that I have learned from um, doing my research and especially from reading feedback from people who've had washer dryer combo units and have noticed that they smell a little musty over time and that is because they close this while this is still wet. So my advice to you if you have one of these is after you do your wash cycle, leave this thing open. It's especially uh, easy for me because I have a heat vent right here. So I will leave this thing open and it will dry in there. If you don't, it has the tendency to um, hold the moisture in the seal here. And then you end up with the possibility, not always, but the possibility of it smelling kind of musty in there. So if you're going to go straight into drying, that's not a problem. Uh, but especially if you're just going to pull this out and then hang your stuff to dry, do that. To be honest with you, even if I use the dryer, I will still let this sit open overnight just to prevent it. It's worthwhile to just do that as a preventative step, um, just to avoid having that as an issue. In case you're wondering if the cat ever tries to get in there. Sophie, you want in? You want to get in there? She doesn't. <laughs> At night, I actually close the bathroom door. I slide this, this door closed because um, I have caught her in my... <laughs> having a nap in my towels one too many times and that is just a pain. Let me show you how I dry my clothes. This isn't going to be a very good angle because it's such a small room and I can't get back far enough. So what I have is a uh, one of these racks that I bought from Ikea and then I have this little thing. It's from Ikea and if you think I bought it because it's cute, you're right. <laughs> Do I keep it because it works? Absolutely. It's where I hang my socks and my underwear. I'm not going to show my me putting my underwear up there, but you get the point. I think that's all I have to say about my washer dryer combo unit, <laughs> which is probably more than you expected. But again, I wanted to show you how it worked. I wanted to show you how to clean that filter so that you would know how to do that. And I wanted to uh, show you what size of load I can do. Because it's ventless does not mean that it's pumping a bunch of moisture into the air. I have not noticed that at all. Again, one of my biggest questions when I got this thing is where is the lint trap? That was a big thing for me. So I had to do some educating of myself. Let me know if you've ever used a washer dryer combo unit, if you would ever consider using a washer dryer combo unit, if uh, our discussion today has changed your mind on them. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I would love to have you part of our family. This is such a supportive community. So thanks for watching and I will talk to you later. Wake up. Wake up. <laughs> Hi. That is the look your cat gives you when they want you to PFO.